critical opinion on Rain World is mixed based on 16 reviews, but what everyone can agree on is that it looks fucking amazing. The environments are so rich, so dense, that you don't really notice all the individual tiles that they are made out of. Just like when you look at a tree, you do not see thousands of leaves and hundreds of twigs. You see a tree. And when you look at one of Rainworld's many screens, you don't see a bunch of individual tiles. You see a place. But no matter how beautiful Rainworld is, it are the creatures that live here that really make the game stand out. Because most games treat their NPCs as puppets. Their internal logic is only focused on providing an interesting experience to the player, which often means that they are not even afforded a basic sense of self-preservation. But creatures in Rainworld do not serve a single specific function. They are not always hostile and they're not always idling. Their goals can change depending on what is around them. And most importantly, the player is never the only thing that impacts their decision making, which makes them much more than mere puppets. They are actors and they are all playing their own part in Rainworld's ecosystem. If this sounds interesting to you, then you should stop watching this video and play Rainworld instead. But I have to warn you that this game is hard. I cannot expect anyone to have the time and pain tolerance required for coming to grips with Rainworld, but I will always recommend everyone to at least check it out. It took me many, many attempts over multiple years to finally play through it, but even when I had given up on ever beating the game, I always looked back on it full of awe and admiration, because Rainworld is the most impressive video game I have ever played. In the next part of this video, I will talk about how Rainworld works, which, even if I'm trying to show as little of its world as possible, will spoil big parts of the game. On a formal, abstract level, Rainworld is like Pac-Man. You have to hunt for food while enemies are hunting you, but everyone here has access to different parts of a very diverse set of movement options, allowing each level to be an open-ended and multi-layered maze leading to highly dynamic situations that feel organic and real, even if they are, fundamentally, simply about collecting points while trying not to get collected yourself. What each screen holds in store for you is never truly predictable, since Rainworld's inhabitants are moving through the world according to their own volition, and in stark contrast to the predictable, player-centric dynamics of the arcade, Rainworld, its creatures, and your character simply exist. A point that the game hammers home when you make a mistake, get caught, and die. The world just keeps going. Whether you are there to see it or not, the creatures are always doing their own thing, reacting to each other or just hanging out, until the rain comes. The rain is the driving force behind Rainworld's core gameplay loop. You need to get food and return to a shelter before the timer runs out, or it will kill you. When you respawn, other creatures will start their highly dynamic lives at the same place as before, allowing you to get a feeling about where they might be, allowing you to navigate the world a little bit more intentionally. But once you have collected enough food, once you made some progress and hibernate, Rainworld reshuffles itself, changing the starting positions of both food and creatures, creating completely new dynamics for you to deal with. So while formally Rainworld might still be an arcade game where you have to collect food points before the rain timer runs out, it is also driven by randomness to an extreme extent, a randomness that consistently makes the game feel very, very unfair. Multiplayer games like chess or football only work if each participant follows the same rules, but fairness in single-player games is a weird and skewed thing. A single-player game is considered fair when it always gives you access to the tools that you need to solve the problems that are thrown at you, but no such consideration is ever made for the non-player characters. They are forced to stand idling in their dungeons forever until you show up and kill them. No matter how hard they might fight back, they are essentially obstacles, existing only to be overcome with the right set of tools. Paradoxically, Rainworld is considered to be unfair 
because it treats everyone the same. Much has been said about the unavoidable deaths that the game sometimes throws at you, but nobody seems to care that, just like you, creatures can make mistakes and fall to their deaths, that, just like you, they can get spawn killed, and that, just like you, they can be easily overwhelmed by sneak attacks from above. And from that perspective, Rain World is extremely fair, simply because its non-player characters have access to the same unfairness that is normally monopolized by the player. This active disregard for conventional power fantasy-like fun creates an utterly unique moment-to-moment -moment gameplay experience that, while harsh, makes sense on a deep, primal level. Finding enough food, avoiding enemies, and hiding in a shelter are natural urges we can relate to, but the abstract symbols that signify your karma level are not as straightforward, even if mechanically they are just a larger version of the game's core loop. Just like eating increases your food level and allows you to hibernate, hibernation raises your karma level, allowing you to enter new regions. But this system exists outside of a relatable world. It is located exclusively in the generally unexplained user interface, and trying to understand it through trial and error can take hours. But the real beauty and the real horror of this game is that understanding how these systems work is only the entry ticket to a gigantic world that, from the smallest fly to the biggest region, simply exists on its own and does not care about your desire for progress in any particular way. When Rainworld started development, it was all about a tight, self-contained gameplay loop taking place on a single screen, but over the course of development, focus shifted towards using that gameplay loop as the means of exploring hundreds of screens, organized into regions and separated by karma gates, where you are always just a tiny little thing moving through a truly huge map. And it is here, in its enormous size, that Rain World can really get to you. You can spend more than an hour trying to go to a specific location, only to then realize that it is a dead end, or even worse, that you have gone in a circle and arrived back where you started. These loops become even more soul-crushing when you do them on a large scale, when you spend hours chewing your way through a region and raising your karma level, only to enter a region that you have already gotten lost in hours ago. There is a tiny yellow creature, an overseer, that tries to tell you where to go, and theoretically you could just follow its directions, but especially when you're starting out, there are so many things to keep track of in the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, that it is extremely easy to enter a wrong region, at which point the Overseer will simply not help you anymore. It will not even tell you that you are going in the wrong direction, but you can also just accidentally kill it or do something it considers to be morally wrong, at which point it will abandon you. And once you have lost the guidance of the Overseer, the despair can start to set in. If you are lost, if you do not know where you are, then every step is a gamble. Everything you do has the potential to either help you or to keep you from reaching your goal, and this is where anxiety comes from. It is the idea that you might be doing things in the wrong way. But if you do not know what your goal is, if you believe that there is nothing you could achieve even if you did everything right, then a truly horrible thought can take up residence in your mind. Why even bother doing anything at all? Despair is a very rare emotion in video games because it hits too close to home. It is too familiar, too similar to how our real-life existence can often feel. And for a video game to allow you to aimlessly drift through a beautiful world full of genuine wonders until you lose interest in its beauty and start to believe that there is no point to any of it is the most radical deviation from the unspoken promise that playing games should be fun. The creatures of Rainworld exist without you, and they have access to the unfairness that normally belongs only to the player, but it is only through this large-scale disregard of your expectations of how games work that Rainworld is able to really make you understand that, on every level, this world does not revolve around you. And this is where most people, myself included, gave up. If you have done that, now might be a good time to revisit the game. All you need is patience, the willingness to follow the Overseer, and the stamina to try just one more time.
The next section of this video uses footage from a more diverse set of regions, shows more of Rainworld's creatures, and spoils the ending of the game. While the sandbox of Rainworld can seem as endless as a desert, it is still a video game. If you manage to keep track of the Overseer and follow its directions, you will be taken on an odyssey through all of Rainworld, where you will encounter regions that are open, interconnected and confusing, but also regions that are linear gauntlets that feel like deliberately designed challenges. This can also be felt on a smaller scale, with Karma Gates being generally located at the end of linear routes, that lead into the nonlinear middle of their regions, and it is this oscillation between open and closed spaces that makes up the structure of Rainworld. The anxiety that builds up when you are lost and confused is released in glorious moments of euphoria when you reach a region that appears to be linear, that appears to have some sort of inherent goal, where the level design confirms that while Rainworld cares very little for your well being, it actually does have an ending, and you are on your way towards it. Rainworld's ending is, quite simply, the end of gameplay. The last region of the game is almost completely empty. There are no other creatures, no food, no shelter, but also no rain. Every moving, dynamic part of Rainworld is gone, and you are alone. The only soft little thing in a world that grows progressively less hard, less solid, until finally you dive into the void sea and ascend to a different realm of existence. If the Karma Gates are a larger version of Rainworld's hibernation driven core loop, then this region is the largest possible version of a shelter, the place where you go after you have collected enough points. Coming here is a monumental effort that takes most people more than 30 hours of dying and respawning, of gathering food, getting lost and hibernating, and now, finally, that cycle is about to be broken. When you stop playing a game, you leave its made-up world and return to our shared reality, which, especially when compared to the simple systems of a video game, is incredibly complicated and almost impossible to describe. Ascension, or transcendence, describes a process that removes you from the world and carries you over into a new mode of existence that is so alien and incomprehensible to us that we cannot talk about it. It is beyond pain and beyond love, beyond hope and beyond despair. It is the fundamentally indescribable big unknown, so it is the perfect conclusion to a game that places so much emphasis on its existence as a real space. The ending of Rainworld is the end of its gameplay loop. It is a 20 minute long interactive sequence that tells you that you have reached the end, that just as your character has transcended Rainworld and is now somewhere else, you have transcended the game and are finally free from the rules it imposed on you. You can, of course, go back. Playing as the hunter emphasizes the arcade origins of Rainworld, giving you only 20 cycles to live and a score at the end, but mods also add huge new regions to the base game, and Rainworld's Discord server offers challenges for the truly mad. But even just coming back to Rainworld for a second run is interesting, because now that you know that this game actually does have an ending, you can take the time to admire the world you were too stressed to take in before, you can do silly little things for fun, or you can spend countless hours collecting pearls that contain small snippets of Rainworld's lore, which, just like everything else, is deeply connected to its core gameplay loop. In Rainworld's world, the endless cycle of death and respawn has been elevated from a video game convention to a solid fact of life. Nobody can truly die, everyone keeps coming back, and the only way to get out of this loop is the one you have already taken, to dive into the void sea and to ascend, meta and physically, leaving Rainworld behind. But if your ego is too big, if you want to write essays and beat challenges, then according to the lore, your ascension will fail and you will become an echo, stuck forever between Rainworld and whatever comes afterwards. Difficult games are prisons that want you to break free. For most, that means giving you clear directions and goals and the means to achieve them, 
For some, that means dropping you into a world that is intentionally unfair and then smugly asking you to get over it, and Rainworld belongs into the second category, no questions asked. But more than any other game, it actually embraces that unfairness by breaking one of the fundamental conventions of video game design. Because this world does not revolve around you. You can die without making a mistake, and you can get lost without receiving any help. And at any point during development, Rainworld could have put more focus on your direct enjoyment, but in defiance of market logic and review scores, it didn't. Rainworld is monolithic. It is extremely internally coherent because it simply expanded the desperate struggle for survival of its core gameplay loop into the desperate struggle for closure of its wider arc, presenting you with a gigantic, beautiful, living, breathing world, asking you to inhabit it, to get lost in it, to shake your fist in rage at it, until you realize that you really are just one of many creatures. It is this incredible strength of vision, this unwillingness to compromise on a single central idea that makes Rainworld the most impressive video game I have ever played. Yes, it is hard. Yes, it is unfair. Yes, it is random. And yes, it doesn't really care about you. But that's just life. Even if it is miserable right now, we should be glad that, against all odds, we can experience it at all. Thanks for watching. Uh, hello, and welcome to the postscriptum part of the video. I'd like to thank Mare and Finn and Cloveld and the people from the Rainworld Discord and Steel0248 and especially Piotr for feedback on the script and the audio recordings. Yeah, this was this was this 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 went pretty well, like in terms of writing and and recording and stuff. I had a very clear process for this video, which which felt very good to have like a, a structure to work on it in. And I'm quite happy with how it turned out. Um, if you enjoyed this um, and would like to support me, the best way to do that right now is to wishlist the game I should be working on, um, which is Producer 2021, which I wanted to bring out this month, but uh, it was just too stressful because it's, it's a text-based game and I have never written like a huge text-based game before. And I kind of underestimated that. So I took a break and like wrote this script and like made this video partially to like get away from the project and partially to get better at writing, which is surprisingly hard. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that one turned out. I didn't I didn't talk about the music and the sound design of Rain World at all, which is kind of a crime because it's magnificent, is really, really good. Um, but it didn't it didn't really fit into the structure and like the type of video that this turned out to be and there's a bunch of like hidden mechanics and like very deep systems in the game that i also didn't talk about simply because it's kind of like for you to discover and it's like just reading the rain world wiki is so mind-blowing there's so much stuff in that game <laughs> that's really uh crazy um and also the the the, 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 the developers um who made rain world are currently working on a new project um, which looks very mysterious. They've been like uploading signals onto the internet and I have no clue what it's about but you should probably also check that out because Video Cult are making like very unconventional games or like at least Rain World is very unconventional and it's very very good. I obvi like obviously I love it a lot <laughs> um, but whatever they're making next um, check that out and support it because we need more we need more, we don't need anything, but it would be cool if we had more unusual, unconventional, very bold video games, um, because those are fun to talk about. <laughs> They're also fun to play. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, that's all I have to say. I am now gonna get back to working on Producer 2021. Okay, that's it. Uh, thanks for your time and have a nice day. Bye bye.